Okay, good morning students. We are just waiting for a few more schools to come. They'll be coming in uh, quietly from the back. I'd like to welcome you all today. Um, I need my class. Today's session, Languages for My Future, is part of the Languages in the Mainstream project, which is a partnership between the Modern Language Teachers Association and the Office of Multicultural Interests. This year-long project has brought together many institutions and organisations from the Western Australian languages sector through the provision of this, um, and for today's event, the University of Western Australia is our major sponsor. Uh, through the provision of this venue and ongoing support. My name is Kate Reitzenstein and I'm President of the Modern Language Teachers Association and I'd like to formally welcome you, welcome our sponsor representatives. So Lorraine Thomas, who is Director of Community Engagement and Funding at the Office of Multicultural Interests. Portia Zahr, uh, Team Leader Funding Programs at the Office of Multicultural Interests. Uh, I'd like to sincerely thank Dr. Marinella uh, Caruso, who is Senior Lecturer of Italian at UWA, and I'd also really like to thank Sabina Coos. Between the two of them, they have done a phenomenal job at, at organising today. I'd also like to thank Karen Gregory, um, who is Project Manager for the Languages in the Mainstream project. I'd also like to wa uh, warmly welcome all our speakers, um, who throughout their, uh, through their contributions to today's forum are supporting this event. I'd like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Noongar Wajuk people and pay my respects to Elders, both past and present. Uh, please note the university policy of no drinks, no food or use of mobile phones inside the lecture theatre. Um, audio and visual recording is also prohibited with the exception of our official, um, our official uh, videoing of the panel discussion for the first part of this forum. Um, year 10s, your year 10s, yeah. you're probably wondering why you're here today. Well, from my experience as an Indonesian teacher, you can go on and on and on about the benefits of language learning and year 10s just stop listening. Um, what would she know? No. I found the best way to get the message across is to hear it from young people. Um, only a few years older, maybe up to a decade older than yourselves. These stories are a lot more believable and immediate. So while you listen to the stories and the insights of our young speakers today, I want you to imagine what you'll be doing in three, four, five years from now. Don't be afraid to think to yourself, I could be sitting in this chair, in this same chair, or in a similar lecture theatre in three years from now. So, I have asked one of our youngest members of our association to be your MC for today, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Eros Scagnetti. Eros is a UWA's honours student in the Faculty of Arts and also works as an Italian teacher for Italo Australian Welfare Cultural Centre. Thank you, Eros. Good morning. And on behalf of us all here, welcome to UWA. Um, so my name, as Kate said, is Eros Scagnetti. I am an honours student here at UWA. I, um, I graduated in March with a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Italian and French. So, so I speak both languages. Languages, to say that languages has changed my life is a massive understatement. It has done a lot for me both with my learning and with my interaction with people. I am a confident communicator because of my studies in languages and I am able to extend that confidence to everyone that I meet because not only am I proficient with words, as my mother says all the time, but I am able to put myself in other people's shoes through intercultural understanding, one of the most important things. You might study French, you might study Italian, and because of that, you can interact with people from a totally different culture because you have those skills. Something very important for you to note. Um, when I left high school, I uh, left with an ATAR of 99, um, an achievement that for me was quite um, <laughs> very, very, very unbelievable. Uh, pursue impossible, as we say at UWA here. 
Um, and it wasn't because of my Italian score as such. It was because languages, studying Italian, helped me to realise that everything is connected. I learnt to, to memorise things. I learnt to communicate proficiently. A skill that perhaps not any other learning area would, would try to consolidate. When you learn a language, you learn content and you learn delivery of that content. It's very important in this global community we live in. And I encourage you all to continue and persevere. Some people will give you negative comments. Why do you want to do that? Why don't you want to study something else? If you love it, continue it. And make sure that you let people know the benefits of language as you get older and as you study, uh, of course, different things and study more in depth. So, um, it gives me great pleasure to, to host this event and to bring together a group of young people who still remember what it's like to be year 10 and representatives of organisations involved in the languages sector. We hope to provide you with a glimpse of what life could be like if you continue studying a language, what sort of opportunities might come your way, and also show you, a possible road, show you possible roads you could take to get there. So I'd like to welcome Williton Senior High School, Fountain College, Canningvale College, Morley Senior High School, Kalamunda Senior High School, Iona Presentation College, Christchurch Grammar, Christchurch Grammar School, and Langford Islamic College. It is great to see such a variety of languages being offered in our, in our WA high schools and to see you all here today. I would like to now welcome Professor Alexander Ludwig, Head of School of Humanities here at UWA, to say a few words. Thank you, Alice. What a letdown, you were uh, promised young people, here I am. Um, then you were told, no food, no drink, no phone. But let me tell you, universities are a great place. What is the difference between uh, school and uni? Uni should be more fun. Well, there is one really fundamental difference. At school, you are very much in the process of the, being the recipient of the transmission of knowledge. At universities, we are trying to advance knowledge, to grow knowledge. And this is probably something um, you are not too happy about because we all heard about the knowledge explosion, about the half-life of knowledge becoming shorter and shorter. And a lot of the stuff that you are currently being taught in sciences, or later on, if you may go on to medicine or anything like this, will be out of date by the time you actually hit the workplace. So, not good news. So, one minute I need from you. Get your pens ready. I've got one message for life for you. Ready? Okay. Because most of the stuff that you're taught in sciences and medicine will be outdated, or at least will have to be built on or expanded or unlearned, Within a few years, you should really invest a lot of your energy in things that are never outmoded, that are skills for life, that is something that is transferable and that every employer wants. When we speak to employers, they say to us, we want students that can think critically, can express themselves sophisticatedly, and are creative. Now, if you are used to putting yourselves into the shoes of other people, looking at the world from other perspectives, if you are used to thinking with empathy because you have learned the language and the culture of another people, you have all of that. All the other skills you can learn on the job. So the one message that I have for you is learn something for life, learn something that is worth knowing and something that is not outdated. So what's the credo? What is my message? There's a price. Learn. Learn languages. Who was first? There's a prize. Hey, who wants it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, danke schön, Professor Ludwig, for the warm welcome. Language learning can sometimes take you in directions you never expected. And during our next session, I'm sure we will hear some stories. I would like to now extend a very warm welcome to four people who have been learning an additional language at school and university and share their experiences with you all. Please make welcome Shay Makaya, 
Colin Bioto, Matt Satchville, and Brianna Harkis. Okay, so to start, um, please introduce yourself and tell us about your cultural background and the languages that play a role in your life. Alright, good morning everyone. Can everyone hear me fine? Yes? Alright, my name is Shayna. Um, I'm in my third year. I'm doing engineering and Italian in the future. Yeah, you do the way. Um, I'm Turkish. I was born here, but I speak Turkish fluent. Um, I've been studying Italian since year eight at Wilton Senior High School, and I've started to teach one at the as well. And unfortunately, I couldn't do any like exchange programs or anything, but I did have the opportunity after years of vlogging to visit this year's summer, and I went to Milan and Florence, and it was really nice. So, thank you. Hi guys, um, Salam Pagi. Good morning. Um, my name is Colin Riotto, I'm Indonesian. Um, so I was born there, I grew up there, and I moved to Perth when I was 13. Um, actually 14. Well, 13 turning 14. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was year 8. Um, I study linguistics and French here at WA, I'm a Turkish student. But I'm also taking Spanish and Italian on the side because I love it, it makes me happy. Um, my name Ella is my Italian teacher here, and Sabine? She's left. She's outside. Oh, she's outside, okay. Um, but I love languages. Um, English is not my first language, um, it's actually my third language. Um, I grew up speaking Indonesian and Japanese, not Japanese, um, the language of Java. Um, so yeah, um, I, I unfortunately I didn't do languages in high school because at that time I was trying to focus on improving my English. Um, now that I'm at uni, I decided to take French, um, Spanish, and Italian just to expand my knowledge. And I won an exchange. I went to France um, last semester and I had a blast. So yeah. <laughs> I also went to Spain. <laughs> uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Paddy. Well, for those who are studying Indonesian, um, my name's Matt. I'm uh, 27 years old, so um, I've been through high school, been through university now. Um, so, for all intents and purposes, I, um, I grew up in Perth. Um, my cultural background is very much Anglo-Saxon. I'm uh, several generations Australian, both my mother's and uh, father's side of my family. Um, so, I certainly didn't uh, grow up in any sort of uh, multilingual uh, environment. Um, I was, I, was, I was fortunate enough in my school to, um, to get the opportunity to study uh, Indonesian um, and then ended up taking my Indonesian uh, as a uh, subject through year 12 and then I ended up doing a uh, major in Indonesian as part of my uh, arts and uh, commerce degree uh, here, here at UWA. Um, I think I, I visited Indonesia um, finally after studying it for, for five and a half years. I visited it during my first year of uni and, and, and was um, absolutely hooked. It was a really satisfying experience. and. Um, you know, I could say things that I've learned in the classroom and, and people would respond and understand it was, it was quite, quite amazing. Um, so, I was, I was immediately hooked um, and uh, when I was third year uni, I had the opportunity to, to uh, go to Indonesia, uh, to Jogjakarta in uh, central <laughs> Java and, uh, and do, do a uh, semester. So I spent, spent six months uh, at a university there um, as part of my degree. I didn't, didn't extend it or anything like that. Um, this was uh, probably by a very, 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 very big margin, uh, the best thing I ever did in life, not just in university, but in life in general. Um, and I, I and I grew up really much uh, kind of <coughs> increased my capital, increased fluency, and, and, and increased um, confidence to speak conversational Indonesian, which is um, very, very different from your formal Indonesian that, that, you, that you learn here. Um, I also met um, my future wife there, so that was an added bonus. Um, yeah, well, eventually I finished my degree and ended up getting a first class honours, which was really good. Um, and I managed to squeeze a uh, gap year into Carter and, and a number of study abroad experience at uh, this time at the University of East Java uh, into that. Um, and then a couple of weeks after finishing my degree, which is um, a pretty short job hunt, I um, was offered a role at the uh, Perth uh, Secretary of the Australian Consortium for Income Indonesia Studies, or a Chief Study Indonesia for short, uh, where I'm still uh, working uh, to this day. 
Um, so I now use uh, Indonesian on a, on a daily basis, both um, at home with my wife and also um, in my professional life. So I'm very thankful for, for the decision I made um, to, to uh, study Indonesian um, through, uh, through high school and, and into university. Good morning everyone, I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is Brianna, so I'm a Murdoch University graduate. I studied Japanese through high school and then after high school I kind of figured, well, this is working out pretty well, I'm enjoying it, I'm going to keep at it. So I studied uh, Asian Studies and Chinese Business in my undergraduate and I ended up studying about 18 months abroad, which was very wonderful. As far as my background, um, you know, I've I don't come from a very diverse background, but um, for myself, it's become part of my life. So because of all those experiences, I've been able to you know, travel to different areas of the world and thankfully have a couch wherever I go. <laughs> but also, you know, here as I've been able to join part of the community. So through Japanese study, there's a lot of uh, other community groups. And I was actually the founding president for the Australia Japan News Society, which <coughs> links up other graduates from Japanese and gives them opportunities here in Perth. So for me, in my current work, I work in international admissions. So that's you know a bit more interesting than it probably sounds to you guys, but it means that I get to look with work with people from a bunch of different diverse backgrounds and you know with international qualifications and help other international students you know, hopefully achieve all their dreams here in Perth. Uh, as far as my family life, um, you know, after studying Japanese and Chinese, uh, I'm now in a relationship. My partner is from Burma, so now I'm learning Burmese as well. Um, you know, probably not something I intended, but as all these guys have already said before me, once you sort of pick up one language, it's hard to start turning away others. So please take the time to, I hope I can help you with any questions you might have today and look forward to it. Thank you very much for those introductions. Very interesting and very insightful. So we'll start with the first question. It's for you, Shema. Yeah. Um, tell us about why you chose to continue with Italian beyond year 10, then beyond high school to university. All right, so I'm going to be completely on the set here. Initially, the sole reason I actually decided to pursue a language was the 10% low bonus. <laughs> that was the sole incentive that kept me going. But, Studying Italian in year 11 and 12, I got a bit more exposure to the culture that I didn't ever experience before. Um, so I found year 8, 9, and 10 to be quite boring, to be honest. Sorry to all the teachers out there. But <laughs> no, I, I found that I could relate to Italian because I found so many similarities between the Turkish culture and the Italian culture. And I found so many overlapping areas that I thought I could relate to it, and I just found it so fascinating to be able to experience that. So, I also had an amazing teacher, Willis Senior High School, amazing teachers, Bianca Pataglia, um, Prof Palermo, amazing teachers. So, shout out to them as well. And also here at uni, I'm not going to undermine any of my teachers, amazing teachers to encourage me throughout the whole process. So, Moving on to uni, again, I thought just in terms of the academics, I thought it would look good on a resume, I thought it would add a bit of character, which it definitely does. Definitely catches an employer's eye when you're when you seeing all the language on it, just put it out there. So that was one of the reasons why, but again, every semester I make the active decision to continue on with it because I'm genuinely that fascinated by what I'm learning. And it's not just language. Just the linguistic aspect of it, just the grammar that you're learning, you get exposed to the culture and so many different things that it definitely, like you said at the start, it's not just about learning the language or the grammar because you can do that, you can teach someone the grammar, it's about broadening your horizons and just being able to understand other cultures. Through learning Italian you can relate to other cultures and just having that mindset because the world isn't as as narrow as you see it, as you may see it right now, because there's so much out there, there are so many different people out there, and it's just a matter of gaining those skills and experiences that you can apply to life. So that's why I continued on with it. I'm sorry if I went a bit over the time, but <laughs> <laughs> passionate subjects here, guys. So that's what we covered. Excellent. Thank you, Shema. Um, so the next question, Colin, um, you're an incredibly passionate language learner. 
Grazie. <laughs> Prego. <laughs> that is evident by the number of additional languages you have learnt at such an early age. So please tell us about what you love about each individual language and the learning of those languages. Okay, so if someone asks me like how many languages do you speak, I would say seven with different degrees of fluency. So that's a sign right there. Um, so um, I have two mother tongues, Indonesian and Japanese. Again, not Japanese. A lot of people, oh my god, you speak Japanese? I don't. She does. Um, and then English, obviously. Um, French. Um, I'm pretty fluent in French, or I consider myself fluent. Um, you can ask Sabi, my French teacher. Um, I also speak um, Spanish. Um, I'm learning Italian and um, also Mandarin Chinese. Um, the thing is, I'm not too fluent yet in Italian or Spanish, but I still consider it as part of um, my skills. Because I'm not going to wait until I'm you know, 100% fluent or like, you know, I reach like near native level to speak with um, native speakers. And what I love about each um, language is that it's a different experience. I can express myself differently um, with different languages. With Indonesian, it's kind of like the standard, um, the standard language that I use to communicate with um, people from um, um, different parts of Indonesia. And then Japanese, that's really like my hometown language, you know. When I speak Japanese to um, my parents, to my friends, I feel at home. And then to English, it's, it's very useful on, you know, I don't know what I can say about English, it's a very useful language. <laughs> I'll go as well, you know, you've got to go through high school, through uni now, and I can get, um, um, I did an internship at OMI. Um, someone is a represent representation from OMI here, there was so much cultural interest. So I did a, um, a 30 week of, 30 weeks of internship at OMI. Um, French, French, um, I absolutely love it. It's such a beautiful language. It's romantic, it's passionate, it's, it's beautiful, and it makes me happy. It makes me, what is that? Oh, that's not fun. Okay. Anyway, I'm very happy you're speaking French. Um, Spanish, Spanish is so sexy, you know, and Italian as well. Like, uh, whenever I feel sad, I just listen to like Italian and, or Spanish songs, and like, I put on Shakira or like Enrique Iglesias, and I'm just like, yes. All right. So this is my photo. Um, I was, um, I did two summer courses and um, one exchange, um, one semester of exchange in France um, last semester um, in 2016. And this was in Dijon. Do you guys know Dijon? Yes. Mustard? Yeah? That's where it must have come from. So that was at the University of Burgundy. And I want to make a point, um, I want to share with you guys the fact that I got to meet people from all around the world who were studying French with me at that time. And we became good friends. I'm not kidding, like we still um, keep in contact with each other. Um, so that lady on the left, her name is Jimena. She's from Chile. And then Miguel. Um, from Mr. Miguel and Justin, they're um, from the US. Uh, Justin is um, Cuban, and then Miguel is Puerto Rican, and then Mort is from the Netherlands. And then those three girls are Japanese, and Ricardo, my best friend, is from Vigo in Spain. I got to visit Mort in the Netherlands after I finished my exchange, and I got to visit Ricardo as well. So, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Uh, right, next question, Matt. So, how can learning a second language benefit a person's study and career options? Tell us about how it has helped you, and can you provide any stories or case studies of other people? Um, well, I, I think for a start, as, as the first panelist um, attested to, um, you know, studying second language in high school. Um, and just potentially make it easier to, to get into to the course uh, if you want to at university, thanks to the 10% um, uh, bonus available. Um, and, that, and I believe that that, that um, counts even if your second language um, doesn't count on your four best subjects. Um, 
I, I in high school myself only got, I think, 55% in Indonesian, so I didn't do that well at all, but um, it, still, it still was enough to get me in and it made me feel comfortable. I think I went straight to second year in Indonesian year, and uh, I think by the end of the year I actually managed to top that. So um, certainly even if you feel like your language abilities aren't um, all that up to scratch, I, I do say persist, and, um, and it doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to count towards, towards your first three rank, or, or um, or you don't have to feel like you're ever going to be that great, but there is, you know, with, with the systems you can usually get there. Um, well, once, once you are actually at the university, you know, certainly language and, and um, with the uh, sort of increased flexibility in, in university degrees these days, it doesn't even have to be a major. You could be, be majoring in, in hard sciences if you want to, and you could still um, take, take uh, bits of uh, languages. Um, Sometimes it's a good way to fill in your, your uh, compulsory broadening that some of the universities require in their degrees these days. Um, so, doing language at uni can actually really um, diversify the experience you have, um, and it also opens up opportunities to, to, to study abroad in, in a foreign language environment, um, which you don't necessarily have if you don't, don't do it. Um, myself, when I was at uni and, and I went over to, to Indonesia to, um, to Gajimanda University in uh, Jogjakarta for a semester, and then um, uh, about three years later, I ended up in a um, in Muhammadiyah University, which is um, an Islamic university in Mala, uh, East Java, which happens to be Colin, the same town here. <laughs> um, uh, during uh, my time in uh, Jogjakarta, I actually went and studied units um, conducted. So units are like subjects at university um, that were conducted entirely in Indonesian, but it wasn't about learning the language per se. It was actually learning content to live in language. So I did things like Australian politics, but to live entirely in Indonesian, and that just exposes you to a whole heap of uh, new vocabulary and gets you up. Uh, I mean, you can really um, diversify the range of topics you can talk about. Um, when I went back, um, I, I added an extra year onto my, my degree and I did, did honours in Indonesian, and, and uh, as part of that honours, I spent my first semester at uh, the University of Indonesia, and, uh, did uh, field work essentially on my um, chosen topic, which was about um, uh, the impact of um, an oil and gas development um, on sort of uh, people who were living nearby. Uh, so uh, here's a couple, there's a couple of pictures there uh, from my uh, time in, in the field doing field work. Um, I found my way into a local paper, um, so I, went, I ended up going out to, to quite a small town, it's only quite a small town, that means 100,000 people in Indonesia, it's a huge place, <laughs> doing a uh, doing uh, field work and, um, and interviewing, interviewing my feet. So there's a picture of a sort of live action shot of me there um, that uh, one of the university staff took because they kind of said what I was doing. Um, and then there's a, uh, and then I, I found my way to get into the local paper as well when I went to, to talk to sort of media outlets who have been, been reporting on, on similar issues. So I think I found myself in the local paper. I also found myself, um, I got interviewed uh, on radio uh, in Indonesian, which was uh, quite, a, quite an interesting thing. And then I got out, uh, also found myself uh, on, on the uh, local TV news, which was pretty cool. Um, so moving on, we were sort of talking about study and career options. Um, I think once, once you graduate and, and move into to a career, uh, having, having a second language um, on your CV, and, and especially if you have a second language and you've used that to, to lead into to an, uh, to a time abroad, as well as living abroad and really going outside your comfort kind of zone, which um, going and studying a language that's not your first language probably does, um, can, can help, um, yeah, you can really help uh, diversify you from, from the crowd of applicants to jobs, you know, like some, you know, some, some position, professional positions um, these days have, um, you know, they'll have hundreds of applicants for, for one position, so it's really important that you uh, have something to do to stick out from the crowd. Um, so, um, what, what I, and I'm, of course, I'm going to go into career and open opportunities outside the English speaking world as well. Um, so, I think I think I covered all my own story in the introduction and just before, but um, I, I think I'll say that I, I certainly would have had some of my most uh, valuable um, life experiences in study wise career lives or in, in my personal life for that matter if I didn't actually continue my uh, language study on on the answer at high school or into universities. And I'm sure my pat Pat and Alice um, who follows some path um, can, can attest to this. Uh, I won't bore you with other life stories, but I've kept in contact with people um, from um, who also studied abroad in Indonesia or um, had continued to study Indonesia through to university, and, 
And market care was there, they're going to get really high power careers. So, you know, we've got people now, there's other public servants, bankers, lawyers, people working in the international aid development, teachers, university lecturers, there's um, almost any profession um, they're doing it. Thank you very much. Next question is um, for you, Brianna. Um, so, how much time of your university degree did you spend in country in Japan, and what enabled you to spend that time abroad? What sort of skills have you gained from learning the language and spending time abroad? Gosh, too many, too much time. Is there such a thing? Um, so, I spent eighteen months abroad, roughly, in Japan, and I guess what that means to me was within my first year, I already spent six months living in Japan, first year of my degree. So that's, you know, pretty, I, I'd say pretty amazing opportunity because, you know, being 17 years old and going overseas and living with a family where, you know, you might not know everything that's going on or you might have, um, you know, a bit of culture shock or, you know, amazement to every single thing that you see from the TV to just going to the vending machine, you know, it's, it's an eye-opening experience that makes you realise that the world is a lot smaller than we think. So, what enabled me to spend all this time abroad was, you know, thankfully, you know, I, I, in thankfully I did, you know, Asian studies for my undergraduate degree, and in part of that degree that I did, I required me to do a year abroad. So after spending, you know, these little instances throughout my degree, I came to my third year and. I was fortunate enough to be elected to the West Australian Ambassador for Japanese Studies in 2014. And that scholarship really changed my life. I mean, we're all talking about life-changing experiences here, but for me, you know, that was a $35,000 award which paid for me to go live in Japan for 12 months and represent this state. So, you know, in that experience, I attended the university in Japan and I lived in an intercultural in a dorm with um, only about 15 other, uh, you know, exchange students, and then there was about 80 Japanese students. And my daily life would be having breakfast with these people, having dinner with these people, you know, studying with them, going to classes with them, you know. And it was such an amazing time because it taught me independence and it taught me autonomy. So, you know, for living at home and enjoying the luxuries of your mum doing the washing, when you go overseas, you can't really rely on these things. And it's even more interesting when the washing machine is not in English. So even if you did know what was going on, that's all out the window. But it teaches you a lot of problem solving, you know, and it teaches you teamwork. So, you know, when I, I got into a car accident while I was living abroad. And, you know, I probably didn't have the language skills to be telling that police officer that I had right of way out on the pedestrian crossing. But thankfully, I didn't have to worry too much because, you know, all of that experience that led me to that day allowed me to think calmly, you know, think analytically, problem solve, work out what my responsibilities were, and work out who I needed to talk to for help, how to get help, you know, and how to take care of myself living abroad. Coming back to Australia, that doesn't sound like that big of an achievement, but when you're going into you know, new workplaces where you might not know what's going on. It means that you have the ability to hit the ground running. So you can really just go and put yourself in any environment and survive. And I think, you know, in an ever-changing workforce, being, have, being able to have an analytical mind and to deconstruct everything, you know, because when you're learning a language, you're not just learning how to say hello and how to make friends and have a cool party trip. You're actually learning people and you're learning how people work and you're learning to understand you know, different perspectives, and some that might even challenge your own. So, in the case of Japan, I was constantly confronted with things that I might not agree with, you know, and I might not be, for me personally, something that I would want to incorporate in my life. But through that experience, I learned that, you know, there are different ways to do the same thing. And sometimes those different ways are just as correct as your way as well. And so, you know, going into the workforce, these are the sort of skills that allow me to be successful in what I do. So it's allowed me to be part of a community, running a not-for-profit with over 400 members. It's allowed me to, you know, event manage and time manage. And now, you know, I've gone into studying law and it's really allowed me to go into international companies and say, actually, you know, when people talk about international awareness and, you know, cultural adaptability, it's not just a word on a resume. You know, I'm a product of my experiences today. So, 
Yeah, I think those are really transferable soft skills, and I think that that's something that you can't, you know, it's more than just getting a full textbook and being able to have a party trick. It's actually, you know, developing your own sense of self. Yep, it's very good. Some very valid points, um, and I find that, uh, you know, why we study languages is how to transfer those skills across as well. And, you know, I was reading an article about um, uh, requirements for lawyers, and a lot of, a lot of the trend is getting language as students um, because of the skills and analytical skills, like you said, critical skills, the resilience that comes with learning a language. So some very good points. Um, we'll just continue with you, Brianna. Number, yeah, number say, um, so at university, what advantages are there if you have studied a language up to year 12 over students who are just starting the language for the very first time? So you might want to talk about advanced standing and credit. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I guess when you're in year 10, it probably doesn't mean a lot, advanced standing and whatnot. But when I said, you know, before about being in the first year, spending already six months of my life living abroad, that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't take those electives in year 11 and 12. So at 17, I was in classes with people who are at 19 or 20, you know, people who have been studying the language for perhaps only six months, but they've had to learn it so quickly and they wouldn't have a strong foundation to sit on. And thankfully, by doing it through high school, high school allows you that extra time, that extra support with, you know, with your teachers to go through content and truly get a strong foundation in what it is. So that when you go to university, you know, you're able to have a basic knowledge of what you're already doing. A lot of the stuff in university, you probably will start in your first year and not know what's going on. It's a very different experience, but learning languages is the one thing that was consistent throughout my whole university degree. So for me, you know, I was allowed to go straight into second year subjects for Japanese language learning, and it meant that because I wasn't spending time doing first year units, I was able to actually pick up Chinese as well. And, you know, that allowed me to delve into another language. And, through that, you know, you just have more and more experiences that perhaps you wouldn't have had if you didn't take it in high school and you probably wouldn't have enjoyed, had the time to enjoy them as much either. Fantastic. Um, so Colin, um, why did you continue to learn your first language of Indonesian when you went to high school in Australia? What benefits did it bring? Low bonus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Um, um, that, what is it, 10%? That extra 10%, um, you know, can mean a lot. Um, sometimes, you know, it means, you know, 89 to 98. Um, and also because I like reading literature, um, so I wanted to, you know, continue with my Indonesian and also to prove myself that, you know, I still have the, um, the language skill. And I did pretty well with my Indonesian um, background speaker course. Um, in high school, I did it through, um, I think it's called Private um, Candidate. Um, and it has given me you know, that extra load bonus. And my ATAR was quite high. I'm very impressed with, very happy with my ATAR. It was um, 98.5, so if anyone can. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, I studied Italian, which was my, my first language at school, and uh, helped to consolidate and reinforce the things I'd learnt at home. It's nice to learn about your own culture, sometimes as a student and not as a you know, know-it-all, so it's great, yeah. Um, so, Shema, your first language is Turkish, but you didn't continue to study the language in high school. Can you explain why and whether or not you would have done so if you had the chance? I was completely unaware of that option up until very late into my high school life. I think it was about halfway through year 12 when I found out that one of the girls in my chemistry class was doing German outside of school as an additional subject. So I had no clue that that was even an option at high school. Um, if I had known, yes, I absolutely would have done it because, like Colin said, 10 percent of graders. I think, as a native speaker, I think I would have performed all right. Um, and I think also, like you said, to have that exposure at an academic level is very different to having casual conversations with my siblings at home. So if I have the opportunity, absolutely, I would have done it for sure. Right. So I encourage any of you, if you want to study your language at home, you might speak another language. Explore your options, do your research, find out whatever you can do. Because at the end of the day, like Colin says, the cutoffs can be really you could be sitting on a 91 and the cutoff might be a 92. So at the end of the day, everything counts. 
So explore your options, do your research, find out as much as you can. Yep, very good, very good. So Matt, um, you recently got married, congratulations. <laughs> Um, <laughs> during your speech at your wedding, you thanked your mum and dad for forcing me to continue. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost myself now. Forcing me to continue with Indonesian after year eight. Would you like to explain what you meant by that? Um, yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm quite glad I didn't get the first question of this panel session because I wouldn't have even been able to say like bonus. So I would have just had to say, well, the only reason I'm here is because my mum and dad made. <laughs> um, uh, so. Um, essentially, um, uh, my, my sort of journey with um, the Indonesian language um, commenced um, when, when I first got high school. I had to choose um, uh, a language, and it was only compulsory uh, up until year nine in those days. So, oh, I was only, only four year eight those days. Um, so, um, I got a choice between Indonesian and French. I didn't particularly like French when I did it in primary school, so I chose Indonesian. Um, and then uh, thinking I might find it more interesting. Um, to be honest, I didn't really find it all that interesting um, in year eight, and I was eagerly awaiting the opportunity to drop it. Um, but I, I, I did quite well in Indonesian, um, and got sort of the final result in, at the end of year eight, and my parents, of course, continued to year nine, um, then into year 10, um, and then I think by year 11, I actually made a decision myself to continue it. Um, and, and now I'm so, so glad that I did, um, because my life um, revolves around Indonesian, both, um, both uh, personally and, and professionally. Um, and I'm sure things would have been incredibly different had I uh, not, not been forced into um, to choosing Indonesian um, when I was 13. Um, so, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, I met an Indonesian girl while studying um, at uh, Gajamani University in Jogjakarta uh, eight years ago. Um, we married in February, um, and I'm now part of a Javanese family. Uh, so that's my uh, brother and sister-in-law, my mother and father-in-law, and, and my wife's uh, two grandparents, um, who all came down to Perth from Indonesia, uh, first time they all visited Australia, um, in February this year. I'll say I'm um, now being part of a combined family, but the fact that I've been able to um, communicate with my, I mean, constantly communicate with, um, with my extended families, um, unlike many uh, other people I know who have um, uh, married into, into a different culture, um, has meant that I've actually got to know my extended family a lot better, getting even a deeper understanding of, of Indonesian, Javanese uh, culture than, than I other, otherwise would have. Um, and I know I'm actually um, very much uh, look forward to, to when my in-laws visit and, and um, when I head, head back to my, to my wife's hometown. Um, I'm, I'm sure not everybody looks forward to, to uh, uh, seeing their in-laws, so um, I feel I'm quite lucky in that regard. <laughs> Thanks very much. That's a very... Um very sort of human example of why we study languages and I think it's quite relevant. You know, you can study the academics and I'm sure that we all want to do well in our professional lives but there's the human element, the personal element that comes into it and these areas overlap each other and when you're at work you need to know how to communicate with people even in society in general so, so languages also helps with that personal communication and intercultural understanding, you know, in, into human understanding. Um, okay, so Brianna, uh, what could students expect if they study the language at Murdoch or any other tertiary institution? Um, yeah, so I guess studying a language, um, I mean I graduated two years ago now, so not that long ago. Um, I think studying a language at any institution, and Murdoch especially, is that you get to travel and it's all well and easy to say, oh, but I can go on a Kentucky trip and, you know, my parents are going to let me have a gap year and, you know, they're all wonderful things. But when you talk about travelling, you really talk about experiencing and being part of something. So on the photo here, you can sort of see this is the dorm that I lived in and um, the guy at the front, he's our little chef. We didn't have any kitchens where we lived, so he would cook for us every morning and every night. And, um, you know, there are people in that picture from China, um, Iran, uh, Australia, Spain, France, Germany, Thailand, and you know, I think I said it before as well, and it's been said um, definitely by others, that when you study a language, you're not studying specifically as a language, but you're learning to meet people, and you're learning to, you know, 
I've traveled the world in other languages as well. So while I was in Japan, um, I actually picked up some ch Chinese, I studied Chinese uh, academically through units I took, and trust me, it's a much different experience learning a third language from your second. Um, but I also picked up Korean in my spare time, and you know, all of these experiences, while I can't say I'm you know, heavily proficient in one or the other, I can certainly say that you know, thanks to studying at university, I've been able to, any sort of, anything that comes at me, I can take on. And, you know, that's a real quality where when you're sort of, you know, in a bit of strife or you don't know what you're, you know, what you're going into, you can assess that calmly. So, you know, for me, um, my partner is Burmese and he's Australian Burmese. So he was born here, but his family were. And it's very interesting in that I think I have more patience for his parents than he has for them. So <laughs> I did all the great jobs of helping with the job hunting and all the wonderful things. But, you know, it's allowed me to experience, thanks to university, I've been able to have, you know, much more experience with other cultures and certainly, you know, his culture and have a better in-depth understanding of sort of what makes people tick. And, you know, I think, yeah, it's just, it's a never-ending experience. You sort of learn that perseverance and you learn that you start to appreciate lifelong learning, which really is what every language is, so. Thank you very much. Um, so, Shema, um, what could students expect if they study the language like Italian at UWA or any other tertiary institution? Yeah, like Brianna said, you'll definitely be gaining a lot of soft skills that I don't think any other um, subjects or units necessarily can instill in you. Um, in terms of the course structure sort of idea, it's not just the language units that you'll be doing, which are like you may think are heavy in grammar or whatever, because we also have culture units, which I think is a crucial aspect of language learning, is you, you can't just learn like the grammar and then say I'm set for life. No, you can't do that because there's so much more to a language. There's the culture and if you don't understand, if you don't have a good understanding of the culture as well as the language, the linguistic aspect of it, then I'm not sure whether you've actually learnt you've benefited that much, I guess, from that language. So, in terms of the language units, um, again, they're not just strictly on grammar either, they have reading, for example. Um, I remember in our second year, John, who may be here, um, he told us we're going to be reading a novel in class. Now, we've been doing Italian for five, six years, but reading a novel is a completely different thing. And I remember at that point we were scared of a novel this thick, I'm not kidding you, it was this thick, it was coloured, so <laughs> it was that sort of a novel, but we were scared of that, but he guided us through it, so it was an interactive sort of process where um, every week a chapter would be allocated to specific students and we'd come up with questions to guide the whole class through that, so it was sort of like a discussion and also than just being thrown in the deep end. Coming, reflecting on our novel that we're reading right now, I'm sure John would be able to comment that would, would definitely come a long way in terms of the content and the thickness has definitely increased as well. Um, so there's that aspect, you have reading comprehensions, you have writing comprehensions. For example, right now in my classes, um, we're reading different articles, news articles every week and we're responding to them in writing, that sort of idea. In terms of the culture units, we've actually covered so much, but I would still say there's so much more out there that I still have to learn about the culture as well. We've covered sports, we've covered food, we've covered history. Last semester, with Marinella, we were actually doing a culture unit, an Italian cinema unit, and every week we would be watching a different movie in a different period in Italian history. Now, when my friends in my engineering class asked me what assessments I had, I would just sort of felt a bit embarrassed to tell them, but it was also boasting a little as well. I would just tell them I have to watch an Italian movie and they would all look at me with envy because they had piles and piles of lab reports to get done. So that was also an amazing, amazing experience. Right now we're doing um, one of the culture units I'm doing and it's based on Italian migration in Australia and I swear it's not as boring as it sounds, definitely not as boring as it sounds. For example, we're studying um, language competence in terms of birth order. So for example, the eldest child in a family may have a better understanding or studies show that they do have a better understanding and better skill set in a language than the youngest. So being able to assess these situations, being able to expose, to be exposed to these, um, I think it's 
it's really crucial. And again, this probably sounds really, really cliche to you guys, but I'm sure my Italian teachers from high school would also be able to vouch for that as well. Being comparing the shame up in year eight, starting high school or starting to study Italian, to the shame that I am right now, I would say that there's a lot of, of course there's a lot of factors, but a huge chunk of it I would contribute to Italian and I would thank my Italian teachers in high school for encouraging me to do this and thank my teachers here right now for giving me the opportunity and guiding me through that whole process because there's a lot of, a lot of support um, in this faculty I found in comparison to other women's so I strongly urge you guys to look into it guys. If you're not considering it, consider it and if you are considering it, just stick to your guns and do it. Fantastic. We're one big family here at, uh, <laughs> at UWI Arts, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's nice. Um, nice to see that you are touched on all that knowledge being out there. Even the most minimal knowledge of a language gives you the skills to decode, you know, um, human experiences, which is fantastic. There's so much for you to discover out there. Um, snapshots into other cultures, snapshots into other time periods. I do encourage you to continue. Anyway, that's enough for the questions now. Um, so it's been a fantastic insight into language learning. Um, on behalf of the Modern Language Teachers Association and the Office of Multicultural Interests, thank you for sharing with us your experiences on language learning. So please show your appreciation for Shay Makaya, Colin Liotto, Matt Sackville and Diana Parker.